to the SBP podcast, Bobo Filmmaking. I'm your host, Susie Botello, and you're listening to episode 189. We are Fade Into Film. everyone we are back in our fade into film show <laughs> we're actually turning this uh it, you know it's been it's been a year and i've got joey min with us how you doing joey hello it's been a year since episode 150 when we first started our fade into film program and that was published on july 18th 2023 like literally a full year and now we are going into this in a little bit of a different way. So Joey and I are going to have occasional guests on the show. And we're going to continue on this mission to bridge the gap between indie filmmakers and smartphone filmmakers on a positive light. And so I thought we would begin with Joey introducing himself since it's been a year since we we did that. Um, mm -hmm. And Joey, why don't you share with everyone who you are, where where you're coming from and where it all started for you? Hey, guys, I'm Joey. And uh, I think like many creators uh, that have pursued this in their adult life, we <laughs> I mean, you know, been doing this since since, um, uh, you know, at least my teenage years, I was part or I guess I created a group, which is still called Art School Dropouts, actually created a group of of like other artists from different mediums. So, you know, some were painters, some were like, you know, the traditional art, uh, like, you know, pen and paper type of thing. And I was like the filmmaker guy. And uh, we actually had a blog back in like 2010, 2000, uh, 2013, like long, long time ago. And it's just that, yeah, from then on, I just really pursued filmmaking. And now I'm doing, I'm a filmmaker on YouTube. Um, I've done, um, I guess by this point in time, I... Uh, have I, I done I have Michael Jai White's um, Trouble Man. I was the fight choreographer, but I also help, uh, you know, uh, direct some of the action scenes. Um, but yeah, but that's kind of what I'm doing. And I'm still kind of pursuing filmmaking in, in the way that I would like to pursue it, you know, to be ultimately become my own director for my own uh, films. Yeah, I think you're going to bring a lot of really cool experience uh, to the show. Um, you know, I think uh, one of the things that that you did now, just for anyone who hasn't been listening, because there's always, you know, someone that just stumbles into the podcast, if never listened to us before. And this is this could be the first episode that you're listening to. Joey uh, was at the International Mobile Film Festival in San Diego, and he did a workshop with Stephanie Pham, who is his partner in crime, sort of speaking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she's she's yeah, she's my ride or die. She's my work wife. You know. Yeah, and so uh, they were there, and they did a workshop uh, lecture um, and a little bit of a performance as well. On action, <laughs> I almost said firefighting. Um, I think it's because of the summer and the heat. Um, oh, yeah. Hot. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, but in action fighting scenes for your yeah, films, yeah. because I do want to emphasize that even though Joey, Joey did film, you know, why don't you s tell everyone about that, about uh, No Budget Zorro? Oh, OK. So the thing is, like, I think you, you found us because we were uh, we made this thing on on our channel because we did have other filmmakers or like up and coming filmmakers on our uh, on our channel that watches our channel. And they're asking, like, hey, is it possible to actually make a movie with your phone? And I'm like, why? Why wouldn't you be able to? Right. It's really just it's just another tool. So, you know, obviously, when we made this uh, short web series, short film kind of thing. We wanted to match the idea that it's like, you know, when people are saying like, oh, you know, like uh, filming on your phone, it's like you could do it low budget. But like it, you know, just to show the the visual, the visual, like a uh, visual aspect of, of what you're using. It's just uh, you know, enhances like your tool that you have. Right. So we have this thing called 
Legend of No Budget Zoro. Literally, we bought like costumes. Um, we got Zoro costumes. We, we bought props. Uh, we kind of just used a backyard and put like different props there to try to <laughs> use the theater of the mind for people. Be like, oh, that's like, you know, that's a mansion. That's a that's a house. That's, a, you know, whatever or other things like that. And I think you found us because, you know, our, our big thing is just to show uh, our viewers that, hey, yeah, you definitely could make a, a film with your phone, you know, and still be able to apply the technical aspects of, of filmmaking to it. Yeah. And and the thing about it, too, Joey, was when I watched that and I and you had at least at the time you had them broken up into two episodes. And yeah. when I watched that, I think it was the first episode that I watched. I was really intrigued that, you know, you promoted it as, yes, you can make, you know, action films with your iPhone. And Mm -hmm. when I saw that, the action scenes were so professionally done. But then you had like water guns and, you know, Nerf balls or whatever, Nerf guns, whatever they're called. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And and you were using these toy horses, you know, the the head with the stick. The hobby horses. Yeah. Um, and those were like incredible. And I was it, it. The thing is, like, it didn't even matter because everything else was done so well. And the choreography for your fight scenes were just super cool. And then it was hysterical. And so I yeah. thought you have everything here in this one. And the other thing that I noticed, too, is like it didn't appear to me like you used an app. Most people automatically, when they start to make their first short film shot on a phone, they start with an app uh, right off the bat. And, Mm-mm. you know, I, I'm, I'm wondering if that's something you want to discuss because you didn't need yeah. to. I, I, I definitely did need to. And I think I was kind of also learning how to shoot a, a proper film on, on the phone during when we were doing that, too. So I did know how to, like, lock my my like uh my iso or yeah Yeah. my exposures and stuff like that um and even though like you know like the the uh it's already given to you with just the basic um just the camera app on on the iphone but we were like learning along the way but while i didn't use an app i still used it as a camera and i still imported the footage onto my pc and you know i did i did special effects i did use a gimbal Actually, the funny thing is, too, like the gimbal that I had wasn't even for phones. So I had to like oh. add, I had to weight. add weight to the phone. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I had this all this extra gear because I didn't want to, you know, spend another 300 bucks or however to like get a phone gimbal. I'm sure there's cheaper ones now. And I didn't know that then. So, but yeah, so we had like one of my, you know, my older g- gimbals and we use that. So that's a that's a thing. And eventually I was like, hey, I'm just going to put this phone on a stick with a phone holder and we could do like crazy angles with it you know nice. like one shots type of thing right so like a broomstick shot type thing yeah like <laughs> i literally just put it on uh, one of my you know uh uh like bow staffs you know and like we just literally duct taped a uh the phone mount at the end of it Ugh. put the phone there and i was just filming it uh, during that that one uh, that's like you know a wonder I suppose right. like when there's the camera's like floating around the Zorro and the other people for like I don't know it was like three minute shot or something. I love stuff like that. Those are some that's those are the kind of stories that I kind of really like are the mm-hmm. making of right. Remember mm-hmm. in HBO they used to do these you know the making of this movie and they would yeah. show all the details of that. You know, I I think it would be really cool to have a show like that for mobile filmmakers, you know, just just that would be kind of cool. Yeah. Um, Pull together. And it's basically having people, you know, be a really cool idea if you got people that do their, um, you know, their movie. But if they, you know, captured dailies, I guess, or like a a vlog of how they built um, or how they made their their movie and you you put that up on do a on little your... uh, documentary of it. You know what, guys? Joey, see, this is mm-hmm. why I love you, Joey. Mm-hmm. We just came up with this, and I'm going to make an offer to you guys who are listening. If you can do that, 
and you can send me, you know, send me an email or something, first message me, whatever. Let me know, and we can put that on our mobilefilmstories.com because that's uh, that's for community members. You know, it's like a it's like a network, and we have videos and films there shop, you know, by filmmakers, but we could totally make a category for the making of, right? Of your mobile films. <laughs> I could totally do I mean, that. I guess it's kind of like, a, it's like a documentary. So yeah. not only are you making a movie, you're also making a documentary of your movie. Yeah. That's double the work. That's a lot of work. <laughs> it's not, I mean, it doesn't have to be, you know, like HBO style, you know, like they would interview people and all this stuff, but it's more like, like I, I did it a while back on, um, I remember I, that was the thing I got hired to do. And I had so much fun where basically I was holding one camera and just walking around on set and getting bits and pieces of the making of and some of the BTS shots of things. And I think something like that, if you could, you know, put it together in a way that's a narrative of how you made your film is what I'm trying to say. More like a narrative of, hey, this is how we made it and this is what we're using. And then you have people talking. Hey, I just, we're, what are you doing? I'm wrapping duct tape to get this, my, my phone onto this broomstick so we could do these shots, you know, and then show a little bit of that in the background. I think if you did something like that, I would totally be willing to share that um, and promote you doing that. Yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, you're basically saying that, you know, um, you know, people should keep dailies, right? Yeah, I mean, in a and way. They, they, yeah, you beat that, put that together and it's like, hey, you know, now you have a good memory of what this production was like. Yeah, and I think it'll also be very helpful for people who are starting out, especially with a phone. A lot of the people, and this is goes back into this program of Fade Into Film because it's like there's there's people who are making films that have already made films with a phone, right? Or with mm -hmm. a different camera using their phone, right? It, it's, it's both ways, right? There are people, you met some of the people in our film festival who were traditional indie filmmakers and they made a smartphone film. And then you also met people who had never made a film before, but they decided to, you know, shoot a film with their smartphone. And so yeah. I think something like this, you know, is something everybody can learn from and can inspire someone who's already made, making indie films to say, okay, maybe, maybe this is fun and doable and could really work and you can see the outcome, you know? Mm -hmm. So anyways, I just think I, I thought this, you know, when you were bringing that up and then gave me the idea and now that you're kind of, you know, inspiring me to, to do this because what I'm thinking about is the community out there. It's another way for us to promote you and what you're doing. If you like to be promoted. <laughs> so, Joey, I want to talk about something that I think is really interesting. I want to talk about movie posters. Mm -hmm. Now, traditionally, you guys out there, you know, and, and not everybody makes movie posters, right? But more and more people are doing it. I remember in our film festival, there were some people I would ask, you know, do you have a movie poster? And they were like, no, not really, especially for a short film. But if you are making a movie poster, the traditional way, right, is the, you know, the, the, the size uh, that normally goes, the ones that you see at the theater, right? Mm -hmm. They're printed out, yes. put on a wall or whatever. And then digitally, right? Um, mm -hmm. but what are some other ideas that we could share so that people can get more creative? I have some, I know I mentioned one to you, so don't bring that one up. Let me bring that one up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, being a filmmaker on YouTube, uh, obviously I think nowadays, no matter what type of creator you are, you need to, I mean, I guess it's part of the, the, the landscape now, but you gotta learn how to market yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. And there are many you know, apps out there or, you know, even like social media sites that, you know, you could uh, promote your stuff on. And since uh, I'm a filmmaker on YouTube, me and my group, um, one of the more important things that we need to do is thumbnails. And I think that is like the digital 
uh, the digital equivalent of, of like a movie poster, mm-hmm. you know, for the things that, you know, to get people's attention. Maybe they want to click it or whatever. I mean, there's like a whole, there's a whole science to it and there's a whole like method. And, you know, even now there's people that, you know, that would sell courses or they have their own method to, to here's how to make the most effective uh, thumbnail, you know, and it, it evolves with people's taste throughout the seasons and how to make a really good thumbnail and stuff like that. So, so yeah, that's, that's one thing. Um, I think that's def- there's definitely, while there is a um, math to it, there's definitely an art to, to making thumbnails. And I think that's the same thing with, uh, you know, movie posters, right? I'm, I'm sure there was like something artists back then would do like, Hey, this, what would, really get people to watch this movie right so yeah and i think also you know the different formats of a movie poster different sizes you know like from a 16 by 9 like a thumbnail right uh through a you know four by four or three by three or whatever for instagram right and then a more traditional one what is that nine by 16 for stories on instagram and facebook yeah you know, That's the, yeah. and I think that when you're doing, if you're, if you're, so social media is probably still one of the best ways to, and it's free still for mm-hmm. some, somewhat <laughs> uh, to promote what you're working on. But I think one way to do that in stories, the cool thing I like about stories is that you can add an, a URL, a link. And the other mm-hmm. thing is that you can add, um, you know, uh, I don't want to say in motion graphics, but, um, you know, like they're, that's, that's a new thing now, man. Right. It, it's a, the, they're little gifts or whatever on those things. Yeah. And if you do those appropriately, I mean, I don't, I'm sure there's a limit to how many you can add, but depending on where you add them, um, I like, so I did one a while back for, you know, my sub stack, right. The first story that I wrote. So there's this guy holding a book and he's got this book open. He's sitting under a tree. And one of the animations that I liked was the twinkling little gold stars. And so I placed that right above the book, right above the open book. And because it's got like this night blue background, right? It really stands out and it's in motion, right? And so there's little things like that. Like if you just kind of pay attention to it, instead of just slapping little movement things on there, you can literally create some really cool stories out of your posters to emphasize really things, which means like if you did have stars like that, you would leave them out for the stories and just know that you could add the ones that are available to you, right? And that's just one way of doing it. You can also save your stories as videos, as well Mm. and then you can you know bring them on to other platforms i used to do this between instagram and twitter for example i know x (laughs) um Mm. but there's little things like that so that your posters since they are digital they're not really limited to being static is what i'm trying to say just a static image Mm. i also have another idea joey this is the one i was bringing up before (laughs) so a long time ago, long, long, long ago, back in the caveman days, <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. I fell in love with QR codes. And then they kind of went away. And now they're back. They're becoming more popular again. And I think that if you have a printed poster, if you go to an event and you're bringing your, or a film festival or something like that, and you're bringing your posters, mm-hmm. try this. Add a QR code with a URL to your movie trailer and show it to people, right? And you could do a, you could do a postcard, right, of your poster, uh, which is, I, I remember Levi did this as well. And so a lot of people bring postcards of their, you know, of their movies um, from their posters to film festivals like ours. Mm-hmm. And if you include a QR code of your trailer... That's actually pretty cool because you could talk people into making sure that they watch your film and promoting your film just while you're out at, um, you know, Starbucks or something. Right. You know, so there's a lot of cool things like that that you can do. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I think um, 
I know there was this. Uh, actually, I, I remember seeing this one dude. Oh, so sorry about that. I I remember seeing this one dude. He had a uh, like a business card thing with like um, I guess like a monitor in there. Oh. I mean, I'm sure it cost him. That's not that's not cheap, right? But I mean, you know, well, he was me an idea. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess it you know it's like a monitor that just plays whatever, and it actually, I think it's like was just like directorials reel and and stuff like that, and like all the things that you know like to to find his work online, and it's a very, I mean you know we're talking about like marketing and packaging, right? Mm-hmm. So that's 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 why it works. I mean people would just kind of be like, oh, I wouldn't normally look at something like this, but if this guy put this much effort and it's creative and it's new, I might as well take a look at it, right? It's not like the typical thing that people see. And I think that's what, you know, you want to stand out. You want whatever you're you're marketing or promoting to stand out from everybody else's. Yeah. And I mean, and that's the thing, right? Like slowly uh, marketing really has become part of um, the the artistic, you know, the, the creative stuff, right? Like, it, you can't just exist solely as a creative in a vacuum anymore, especially now, right? You have to promote if you want people to see it. Or like you would, I mean, no matter what, you promote in uh, whatever way anyways, right? It's just that, you know, there's a, uh, it's kind of funny learning the business, I guess, part of of being a creative in, in this day and age, you know, with, with all of the social media apps and how you would promote it. Yeah, like you did, um, one thing you did, you brought to the film festival and I, I brought, uh, three or, or something like that of those home with me. <laughs> one is in my bag <laughs> that I take with me when I go some places and it's your logo, your art school dropouts logo, and it's a sticker. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and I made some also, uh, for my podcast. And so what I do is I, I always try to slip a couple of those when I go out and if I meet somebody and the conversation, you know, goes towards the podcast and I'll pretend it's your movie, right? Mm-hmm. Then you can always say, well, yeah, here's a sticker. When they take that sticker, it's not like they're going to throw it away. Business cards tend to get, I, I haven't printed new business cards in a couple of years now because mm-hmm. it feels like it, it's, it's a wasted resource in a way where stickers mm-hmm. are not. People like stickers right? and they'll stick them on something, you know, um, but but they won't just throw them away. And if they throw them away, someone else is going to pick it up and go, oh, look, it's sticker. <laughs> um, so so right, that's right. one way to do it. But you know what? What you were just talking about with the monitor. So, you know what a digital frame is, right? Because a lot of people have those at home with photos. So I used to do this uh, at the film festival. I used to bring, I have a digital frame and I would put uh, photos and some graphics from the film festival from years before. And I would put it on a table. And I was just thinking that's something that you could do if you make a, uh, you know, the, the frame that I have is like a, you know, I forgot. It's like a six by four format, which is fine with a 16 by nine. And if you, if you use something like that, you know, then when you go to an event or, you know, where, where you're promoting your show, your, your movie or something like that, or at a film festival, or even for the screening or something like that, what you do is you put the photos on a USB drive and you plug it in and then it just, um, it just, it's on a loop, you know, it'll go from one photo to the next and you can format your, your poster in that shape and add it to it, show photos. And then in between those, add another copy of that, that image to promote your poster. So like you share, you know, maybe some BTS shots or maybe some shots, you know, some production shots and they show your poster, you know, maybe Mm -hmm. after each four or fifth photo or something like that at the most you promote you keep showing your poster but i think the posters don't always have to have the same image you can definitely do um you know you keep certain elements so that people know oh yeah that's for this movie right but you can change colors and you can change different things so that it still feels kind of new 
mm-hmm. on the public. Right. No, I mean, that's, those are good ideas. Yeah. So um, I just thought that would be something really cool to kind of bring up uh, for our listeners. And I, and I really want to emphasize, I'm serious about those behind the scenes videos. Yeah. I think that, I think that's a very great idea if, uh, you know, there's other, cause you know, there isn't really a lot of spotlight on, on, um, independent filmmakers. I just use the phone mobile filmmakers. Right. Mm-hmm. But at least here, you know, like I'm all about kind of like everybody. <laughs> yeah. Like people would like, not only the filmmakers would be making their movie, but now you could have like the rest of your cast and crew actually, uh, you know, film some dailies for you guys. Yeah. I mean, if you bring Actually, your buddy to to your productions, you know, if you're doing something like that anyways. Yeah. Because actually the thing is, um, the last project we're working on, there's like a bunch of um, like teenagers. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> imagine that. And, uh, <laughs> imagine that, right? And, I'll, and, you know, we said that, hey, it's not a closed set, you know, feel free. Like, because uh, I think we want to use the stuff that you guys, you know, like take selfies, take video or whatever. And we're probably going to use that for marketing too. Gotcha. Right. And, and everybody's now, everybody's kind of part of it too, right? Like the, you know, like, Hey, you know, they document their day, you know, that's something that's actually kind of fun for them. Yeah. Right? It's very it's, inclusive. I love that. Yeah. It, I didn't, you know, I didn't see it until I like, well, I didn't think about it until I saw it and how they were just in it. They, they, they enjoyed it. And I was like, oh, crap, that's a really great idea. Yeah. Yeah. And they can be a part of that. And then you could put these things together. And when you do that, create the thumbnail and then send the photo to me, too, so that we can help promote those. And I'm serious. You know, I've been talking, you know, on this podcast and having guests on and and doing this show for and now in October, we're going on seven years and, mm. and I know that I know a few of you who are listening, I know who you are and things like that. And so mm. I'm talking to you and I know that for some of you, you know, that I love to promote you guys that, you know, this is, I'm very passionate about this, but it's, it's you, you know, it's, it's about you for me. And I'm not saying use me, <laughs> but Take advantage of the opportunities that I offer because they're they're genuine. If you've been to the film festival in person or even if you've participated in some way, you know that and I'm pretty pretty real about what I'm saying here. And if I say like I'm saying now, you know, do something like this and and share it with me and I'll promote it because it it does take some work. You know, it's going to take some time and work for it. So I'm not going to ignore you if you share it with me. Just just do your best at it. You know, don't don't throw something together that's really bad with like super fast moving camera moves and things like that. But do something, have some friends look at it and go, yeah, that's actually pretty cool. And then they just send it to me. And I want to promote you. I'm always looking for ways to promote you guys. You guys rock. You're you're my rock stars. I wake up in the morning and guess who's on my mind? You are. <laughs> so, well, I think this probably is a good. It's um, we've we've shared some good things for our first new uh, yeah. year, second year of the Fade Into Film program. Um, mm-hmm. Any last thoughts? Uh, not really, but like, just go out there and film guys. I mean, you know, (laughs) that's really it, right? (laughs) Promoting it and just inspiring you guys to make movies, right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what equipment you guys have, as long as you have a good story to tell and you know how to use the stuff that you're doing. Even, even a phone is, could be like, you know, most powerful tool in in your, uh, in your arsenal and making a film. And if you need some ideas, (laughs) Watch No Budget Zorro. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks for uh, listening. And uh, Joey, say goodbye to our listeners. See you guys. <laughs>